our universe is expanding at an astonishing rate for 13.8 billion years. But according to the video we made last week, and the link to it that appears on the top right for you, we said that according to a law discovered by Newton and completed by Einstein, all cosmic bodies are exerting a force called gravity on each other. And according to this law, the universe should collapse back to a point and another Big Bang should occur. But how is the universe still expanding at this speed? Is there another force that has not yet been discovered? What is the speed of this expansion? And how did scientists estimate the age of the universe knowing this speed? If you're interested in having all your questions about this expansion answered, be sure to stay with us until the end of the video. And to support us, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. In the beginning, people believed that we are the center of the universe and that the entire cosmos revolves around us until many scientists like Galileo, Kepler, and others over hundreds of years refuted this claim and showed that we have no superiority over other celestial bodies. But until just a hundred years ago, scientists believed that there was only one galaxy in the universe, and that was the Milky Way galaxy where we reside. It was Edwin Hubble who, through continuous observations and research, demonstrated that not only are we not the only galaxy but billions upon billions of other galaxies exist just like ours. When Edwin Hubble proved this claim, all the scientists of that era, even Einstein, believed that the universe was static and not moving at all until Edwin Hubble refuted this claim by observing the redshift and blue shift of celestial bodies and stated that the universe is constantly expanding but how did he manage to prove his claim? You've probably experienced a loud sports car approaching you at high speed and then suddenly moving away from you. When the car is approaching you, the sound waves reaching your ears become shorter and the sound becomes lower, like the sound you hear now. But when it moves away from you, the sound waves reaching you become longer and the sound becomes louder, just like this sound. The phenomenon you're describing is called the Doppler effect, and it also applies to light waves exactly the same way it does for sound waves. Everyone knows that as the wavelength of light becomes shorter, the light appears blue, and as the wavelength of light becomes longer, it appears red. When a star, or a celestial object, which is itself a source of light, moves away from us, according to the Doppler effect, the wavelength of the light reaching our eyes becomes longer and shifts towards the red end of the spectrum. Conversely, if it approaches us, it shifts towards the blue end of the spectrum. When Edwin Hubble was observing the stars, he noticed that all celestial bodies at distant distances from us were moving away and their wavelengths were shifting towards red due to the Doppler effect. After that, he recorded all the information about the stars and celestial objects and presented his revolutionary theory about the expansion of the universe. This theory stated that the universe is expanding with a constant known as the Hubble constant. Much like a balloon being inflated, all points on it are moving away from each other and the speed of their separation is proportional to their distance from each other. Because when Hubble was observing the cosmos, he noticed that any object farther away from us had a longer wavelength compared to an object closer to us. The constant estimated by scientists today for the Hubble constant is 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, which means the universe expands by 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec, or approximately 3,261,563 um, light years every megaparsec. Now that we understand the rate of cosmic expansion and how it was discovered, we need to answer the question of why the universe is expanding at such an astonishing rate. Scientists attempted to answer this question by calculating the total mass of all cosmic bodies and estimating that due to the gravitational force they exert on each other, the universe should be contracting at a significant speed rather than expanding. They predicted that there must be a mysterious and invisible energy that could overcome gravitational force 
and caused the expansion of the universe, which they later named dark energy. Scientists, by carefully examining the rate of cosmic expansion, realized that if they were to trace back in time, everything in the universe would converge into a single point again. Through calculations and observations, they determined that approximately 13.8 billion years ago, the entire universe had been condensed into a single point. This led to the formulation of the Big Bang Theory. If you're interested in understanding what existed before the Big Bang, watch the video that appears in the upper right corner for you. However, when the James Webb Space Telescope was deployed and began its operations, it revolutionized our understanding of the universe with its observations, showing that our knowledge of the cosmos is still far from complete. The James Webb Space Telescope discovered a galaxy that is 13 billion years old by observing the farthest cosmic objects. However, according to the Big Bang Theory and the age of the universe, the existence of such a galaxy at that time seems impossible because 800 million years after the Big Bang, the universe had not matured enough for galaxies to form. The discovery of such a galaxy has indeed astonished all scientists, leading them to speculate that either we have underestimated the age of the universe, or this galaxy is a remnant from a pre-Big Bang universe. Both of these theories are quite extraordinary and perplexing. However, no one has been able to explain yet how and why this galaxy exists. The second critique of the theory of cosmic expansion is the existence of a discrepancy in the Hubble constant. We can obtain the Hubble constant in two ways. The first way, standard candle. In this measurement, using standard candles such as Cepheid Variable Stars or Type IA Supernovae, astronomers can determine the Hubble constant. The value obtained from this measurement is 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. The second way, standard lines. In this method, scientists measure signals from the early universe, including the cosmic microwave background, or CMB radiation, which was first emitted approximately 380,000 years after the Big Bang. They then calculate the Hubble constant based on these measurements. The value obtained for this measurement is 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. These measurements were conducted thousands of times by the most powerful telescopes, yet they consistently converged to the same values. Initially, it was thought that there might be some computational error involved, but with the advent of the James Webb Space Telescope, these same figures were obtained once again. Scientists concluded that our understanding of this theory is still not complete, and perhaps in the coming years, a more comprehensive or alternative theory may replace the Big Bang Theory. Now, do you think the Big Bang Theory is wrong and in the future, a revolutionary theory will take its place? Or are scientists making mistakes in their calculations? If you like this video, please give it a like. And for more information about gravity, watch the video that appears on the right side of the image.